This is one of those videos that probably won't get many views, and very few people will attempt to make this, and it's a shame. I have quite a few videos in this category, plating elements that patrons in restaurants rave about. It's also the sort of thing that never appears in a cookbook because it's only a tiny portion of a plate that doesn't even constitute a side dish. There may be one or two of these little cubes on a finished plate and that's it. It's one of an array of little jewels that transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary, the dining experience that keeps customers returning. I usually use Russian Baltica Porter for this, but uh, that's going to be really hard for you to find. Here's one that's a lot easier to find that works awesome. It's a Fuller's London Porter. Well, the preparations for this mise en place is quite simple. I have uh, 180 grams of rutabaga or yellow turnip. I've cut into uh, larger cubes than I used for the soup if you watched my last video, uh, but still cubed and boiled. And also, these were only boiled for about eight minutes, not nearly as long. Five to eight minutes is enough. Uh, I have a shallot here, which I'm going to peel and slice, and I've got about 90 milliliters of uh, roughly three ounces of uh, the porter beer. Begin by heating a nonstick pan. I'm adding about half the butter, um, about 15 grams. I'm going to let this melt and uh, foam up. Okay, now add yellow turnip or rutabaga in here. Make sure it's a single layer on the pan. Heat's fairly hot. It's uh, it's a, just a little over seven on a one to ten. I've spread these pieces out on a single layer, and I'm not stirring them. I'm going to let them cook like this for a total of about five minutes um, because we want to really have nice caramelization on one side of these. If you keep stirring them around, they won't caramelize. Okay, it's been about five minutes. As you turn this around, you can see you get some color here on the sides that we're facing down. So, now we're going to add the shallots in that I cut into rings and the salt. Now during this stage of the cooking, you can stir it around once in a while, every minute or two. Still, don't stir it too much because we want the shallots to caramelize and we want to get even more color on that uh, on the yellow turnip or rutabaga. And it's been about three more minutes. You can see the shallots are getting um, quite dark in places. All the butter's been absorbed. There's no liquid in the pan. Now I'm going to add that porter. I've turned the heat down just a tiny bit from about seven and a half to six. Um, and we're going to cook this until the porter has all been absorbed or evaporated. Okay, it's been about two and a half more minutes. This is almost completely dry again. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of push these off to the side. I'm going to add the rest of the butter in the middle and this sprig of rosemary. You, you don't actually have to use the rosemary. It's okay without it, but it's even better with it. This will give it that rosemary flavored butter to, uh, to do the last stage of the cooking in. I'm going to let this melt and we'll kind of push these around make sure we get some of that butter on there and we're going to cook it down until it's almost dry again. After a minute or so it starts to look kind of dry again. I'm going to reduce the heat down now to just a little bit under four. Now here's the tricky part. This is going to take a little while and you have to be patient and it will seem like, oh it's done, it's done, let it take it off, it'll be done. Not really done. It needs a little bit more for that professional touch and this is also where you're going to add a little freshly cracked black pepper in. You need to taste it during this last stage of cooking. You'll notice the beginning part of this, this stage, this is very bitter, very bitter. You might think, oh my god, I don't think I can eat this, it's so bitter. But as it continues to cook, the bitterness fades, the sweetness picks up, and then also you store this until the next day. It will hardly be any bitterness. It'll just be this remarkable, meaty, unique flavor. <laughs> very hard to explain. Slightly bitter. A little touch of bitterness. But, but very pleasant. 
and this is what you've got at this point. <laughs> it doesn't look very appetizing because it doesn't get served like this as a, as a plate of goop on the plate. You, you take a few little pieces of this and you scatter it about on a plate with like a steak or something that, uh, that will kind of conceal the fact <laughs> of what it looks like as a, as a pile. And individually when you eat this with a piece of meat or something, it's just wow, it's, it's just incredible. You have to try this. Now, if you're looking for the presentation rather than the taste, then don't cook it as long and you'll get cubes that look like this. The second volume of my cookbook is now available through Amazon and other booksellers. It covers the YouTube recipes from the last eight months with more in-depth information. I received requests for the procedures on all recipes and I've listened to you. Every recipe has step-by-step -step directions, and of course, there are recipes that aren't on YouTube. But this is not just a recipe book. Far from it, as you can see from some of the topics scrolling by here. I'm certain that anyone who watches my channel and any serious cook will find this book a treasury of useful and new information you won't find anywhere else. If you want to know more about my adventures as a chef around the world and have some great laughs along the way, be sure to check out the video tour of my book, 40 years in one night. It's up on YouTube right now. Click the link. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.